Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Daggett and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about one art tip that I think is really, really crucial and important. Shapes. That's right guys, we're going back to preschool geometry and I'm going to be showing you how to draw triangles. We're going to cover circles, squares, ovals, diamonds. No, I'm just kidding guys. Today's video is not about simple preschool geometry. Maybe it is. We are going to be using some simple two-dimensional shapes today, but trust me, you're going to like this video. It's a really important art tip that I can give you guys relating to drawing tattoo flash, print designs, just any sort of artwork you guys are doing, paintings and that sort of thing. This is a really crucial tip involving 2D shapes, 3D shapes, and some abstract shapes to build a really strong foundation in your artworks. So let's go to the overhead. Okay guys, welcome back to the table. Like I said, today we're going to be talking about what I believe to be a really important fundamental art and drawing tip, which is shape and the use of 2D shapes, 3D shapes, and even abstract shapes to basically aid the drawing process and create better artwork. So I believe this is a fundamental, in my opinion, for all of all forms of art, but specifically in drawing tattoo designs and tattoo flash, I believe this is really important, so I think it's a good foundational exercise for you guys to start doing with your own artworks. Basically, when you start out, a lot of the time you'll be looking at other artworks that inspire you, and even looking at tutorials like my own on YouTube, trying to find lessons on how to draw things. But a really good way to start drawing things if you can't find a tutorial on it, or if you want to draw something that's a bit different, is to be start looking at the shapes of those items. And I'm talking about the 3D shapes as well as the two-dimensional shapes. And then sometimes there'll be abstract shapes that can be simplified and broken down into 2D or 3D shapes. And the 3D will give it the form and structure. If the design's a bit simpler, like maybe it's an American trad design or something, then maybe you'll just be looking at the 2D shapes in those instances. But today I'm going to be using the example because in the beginning I had a lot of trouble getting the shape right for koi fish. And I wanted to show you that they are just basic, basic shapes involved. So to start out here, I'm going to be drawing the, the head of the koi fish as our beginning point, as our starting point. And as I said, like in the beginning, I used to try and draw this sort of thing. So I'd start with an eye shape. And then I would build upon it and slowly add parts to the design and just hope that it would sort of come together. I'd slowly be building on the design and just hope that it would come together. The issue with that is a lot of the time it would leave me with not enough room on the page because nothing was pre-planned. So I'd be halfway through a drawing and realize that I'd need to come off the side of the page. And the other thing too is nothing was planned so I couldn't layer things. In other words, once I had drawn a certain part of it, I had a lot of trouble changing things or adapting things depending on the way I wanted the design to go. The second example I have is the two-dimensional shape uh, approach, which is great and it can work, like I said, depending on the type of design you're doing. But in terms of like this, like a koi fish, it's also not the best approach. So a two-dimensional approach would be trying to find the shape of the head first by doing like a two-dimensional shape like a semicircle sort of shape and then drawing the eyes in but then when you get to the other side you're not quite sure does the eye go on the outside does it go here does it cut off at that point it's very difficult to gauge where things go on a two-dimensional surface when you're trying to draw a three-dimensional object the third approach which is my favorite approach for this type of drawing is to start working with three-dimensional shapes. In other words, finding the shapes within a drawing and simplifying them to 3D block objects. And they don't necessarily have to be squares and triangles and circles, but they can be close along those lines or sort of abstract three-dimensional shapes. So for this koi fish head, for example, I'm gonna create a box that's a little bit shorter on one end like this and because it's a three-dimensional item we're gonna give it sides so you can see we sort of have a box shape now this gives us a plane on the side here 
and a plane across the top. We also have one coming down this way and down across the front, right? So this gives us a center line to work with as well. Coming off this front plane, uh, this entire section is the front plane. I can come off and draw a diamond shape. Now this can be a two dimensional shape if you wish, or you can make it more three dimensional by adding some lines in, giving it almost a pyramid like shape. On the left side plane of our box shape is where the eye will be because the eyes are sitting on the sides of the fish head. They don't sit on the top of the fish head, unless it's a flathead or a flounder or something like that. They sit on the sides of the head. So now we know where to put the eyes. So drawing in this three dimensional way can give us a lot of freedom to change things as we go before we start adding in a lot of work in the details, but it allows us to work with the simple shapes of the items. So continuing on with this one, I can show you that there's different shapes in all of these. For the whiskers on the koi fish, we're going to come down here and do circles. And I want to do two on each side. And from those circles, I can do little spiral shapes. And that's just moving our pencil in circles to give us these little spirals. From here, we can do an overlapping circle with the eye to give us the back portion of the eye there. On the other side now from this point you, you're going to go ahead and add in your body drawing in a line for the spine and you can see that's a two-dimensional shape I've done the bottom of the body and the top of the body a better way to do this would be to do a spiral or circles that give us the full three-dimensional look of the body like this so you can already see that that creates a plane along the top here and there's the sides of the fish and this actually falls onto the belly of the fish area. So just by adding these lines of, of uh, contour lines is what they call them, just by adding these contour lines to show how the object curves and forms on the page can actually give you a much more realistic result but also something to work with that's a little bit better than just a 2D shape or even just trying to slowly sketch it out um, without planning anything. So I find planning things in this way in a three-dimensional fashion works a lot better. In terms of doing the fins, a lot of the time to do the fins, I'll do two-dimensional shapes because the fins are quite flat and don't tend to have a lot of dimension to them. And I'll do these sort of triangle shapes which are almost, I don't know, like the point is to one side. So it's short triangle here and a longer triangle there. I was never the best at geometry, so I wouldn't be able to explain to you what that's called, but I'm sure there's a name for it. And we'll do the same on the other side for our other fin. And this starts to put together a design. Now, obviously this is not gonna fit on our page. I'm just doing this to explain the process. So I've done everything a little bit bigger, but generally speaking, if I wanted to do a koi fish this large, I would do it on a larger sheet of paper. But you can see how this allows me to start scaling things um, and preparing for an actual sketch rather than just trying to start drawing a koi fish in the middle of the page. So generally speaking, the next step of the process is where you'll start to add in a little bit more detail and you'll start to use more abstract looking shapes over the top of these. So I call this like the foundations. This is like the structure of a building. And then when you start to put in the wooden frame, uh, or this is sort of like the blueprints, and then you start building the structure on top of it, which is like your wooden frame. And that's the second stage. We're starting to actually draw in a little bit of detail, but we're using just more abstract shapes on top of our basic three-dimensional and two-dimensional shapes. And then from there, you start to add your actual you know, details and design elements, which would be the same as, I guess, painting and decorating the walls of a house and that sort of thing. So we're sort of building this structure of this drawing from the ground up. So from here, what I might do is add a little bit more definition and shape to things 
So we're adding in our eye. I add a little crescent shape behind that. And you can see I start to add a little bit more detail to the design here. Of course, this section at the top of the head won't be a straight line, so we might curve that in only slightly and join it back in with a curved line. And we might add our little lines in there. So from here, we're taking three dimensional, I guess, um, straight line, very rigid shapes and starting to add some curves to them to give them a little bit more of a natural, natural look. So you can see because these are actual little tubes that we've created by spiraling as opposed to just drawing the shapes on, we now have a pretty realistic view of how things wrap around because we've already drawn the three dimensional shape. Allowing us to get an overall better shape in the end. So now that I've gone and added like a second layer to this, you can start to see the structure come together. Now little fine details like maybe little tears in the fins or just the unique elements that you're gonna add to it in your artwork, like your preference of your style and things like that, that comes at the next stage, which is like building an actual style upon this. We're just doing like the real basic foundation work of drawing a koi here using really ba basic shapes. So we used a box for the head, but you can see that once it's constructed, it has the right shape to it without looking like a box. All right, we've added abstract shapes and smooth lines to sort of remove that structured element from it while still maintaining a form of structure that gives it a three dimensional look. And like I said, you know, trying to sketch something from the eye is where a lot of people might start or maybe from the mouth or something and trying to sketch outwards. It's a really good way of doodling if you're just trying to create some sort of abstract drawing. And don't get me wrong, some people can do it. They can just freehand from one area to the next. But I generally find that people can do that after years of experience drawing the same subject matter. So like, yeah, I can generally draw a decent koi fish or a decent dragon head without any of these structural lines, but that's because I've drawn so many of them that those structural lines are happening inside my head. So every time you're drawing a line, you're sort of seeing those structured shapes in your mind on the page, but it's a lot easier to start by putting them down on paper and building upon them to create your design. Okay, so I thought I'd include a little bonus in today's video. Someone asked me how to draw uh, finger waves and I did include the Japanese style finger waves in one of my tips and tricks videos but they said they're still having a little bit of trouble with it and I, I know a few other people might still be having trouble getting down the finger waves and if I'm honest it's not something that I'm really really good at but I do have my own technique for doing the finger waves so I figured I'd share a little bit more in depth in this video on how to do those by wrapping them around the, the subject matter that we've so got. we're gonna wrap some waves around probably this side of the body here so sort of crashing around the body like that and i'll show you how we're going to go about doing that now okay so first things first i want to have a wave that wraps around from the underside of the body to the top of the body like this so we'll have this wave sort of cut short and we're just doing like a backwards c so like a curve and then from the tip of it we're just going to come back around like that now to start building out the shape for our wave, we can just do some messy sort of finger shapes like this to sort of find out where we want things to sit. And then to actually build the waves is pretty straightforward. We're gonna come up with a curved line. At the end of that curved line, we're gonna loop back around following that curve back and just widening that that gap between there a little bit so that it creates a little bit of a larger area at the base of the wave. Coming up into the next one, we can create a small wave 
and a bigger wave on top of that. Now between the waves, you can also put these little, just these little curves that follow the direction of the wave. And I guess that's to indicate, although, you know, water's fluid, so it doesn't fold, but in a static photo sort of position or in a static drawing position, the way that you depict, I guess, folds in the water or shadows in the water, um, areas where you can add line work to it, we're adding in these little folded areas uh, of, of the wave. Coming out from behind there, you can do another smaller one. Another one here. And maybe another small one on the top. And you can see that I'm just following that real rough sort of shape that we did at the beginning there. Now I'll cut this one back a little so bit. So to show you what I've done there, is we're coming down and doing a sharp S curve. So unfortunately at this point, I realized that I had lost some footage, um, but I think you get the point of how we're drawing these. It's pretty straightforward. We've just drawn lines up that go behind this area to join the back of the wave up. And apart from that, it's just sort of sketching around uh, trying to be fluid with it and finding a rhythm. The actual waves aren't difficult to draw, but finding a little bit of a rhythm and a knack for the shape and the curves can be a little bit difficult. It just takes practice, which is what we're doing in the next So part. I figured a really good way to get you guys to start practicing the finger waves in case that's something you're interested in learning is to basically take a blank page like this and just fill it with little wave drawings. Just be really loose with it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself and try to relax your hand in this sort of circular motion so that you get these big loose curves. And like that we can start drawing in some really simple wave shapes and it depends on how you draw them you know all artists draw them a little bit different especially like all you know, tattoo artists and uh, Japanese style artists will draw them a little bit differently. I know some guys like to do the real big curves that sort of loop right around, like that sort of thing. And then I know some guys that like to do these smaller curves, which are more like this sort of thing. That's a horrible example. But they're like really little sort of style curves and I sort of like those ones. Um, I guess my style is a combination of the two, I suppose. I, I sort of don't think about it too much how I'm drawing them, but I'll just come in and sort of randomly put in these wave shapes. I don't worry too much about the shape of the actual waves themselves, but it's important to do that, especially in the beginning, if you're thinking about you know, putting the waves in a really particular part of your drawing, uh, then the shape of them does matter. But yeah, go through a page like this and just draw in as many waves as you can fit. You can try shading them if you want as well, just to give you, yourself a, an idea of how to do that and to practice doing that as well. And that way you can get all these different types of waves, find out what works for you, and maybe even find your own style of doing them. But I just come through if I was you and just start drawing them. Don't worry too much about wrapping them around a figure for now because you, it's, you know, that's sort of something that's difficult to do. Um, but yeah, draw them separately, draw the waves on their own and try to get a hang of the shapes and the curves that we're going to use. And you can see straight away that I've got a nice page of waves here that I could wrap a lot of these around a design. These waves here could go around the left side of a koi fish, same with these ones. Um, these smaller waves would be really good wrapping around the front of something. We've even got a little tunnel here between this point and this point. See, we've got these waves wrapping this way and these ones wrapping around this way. So we've even got like a little tube shaped tunnel there that we could fit something inside. But yeah, you've got all these spaces you can sort of work with and work your designs around. So it's a really good idea to just grab a sheet of paper, grab a sketchbook even, and just fill every page with waves. I think that would look really cool actually. I might do that. 
uh, with one of my spare the sketchbooks. Just fill an entire sketchbook with waves. That'd be sick. That is it for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it and this art tip gives you uh, inspiration. I really hope it helps you with your future artworks and helps build a solid foundation underneath whatever art style you choose to work with, whether it's painting, tattoo, flash, or anything else. If you like this work and you want to see more of my work, head over to Facebook at Dagger Designs to see my online portfolio and any other upcoming work that I have going on. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you'd like to see next time, whether it's a drawing tutorial, an art challenge, more tips and tricks like general art tips and tricks, or I can talk about tattoo stuff. Whatever you guys want to talk about, leave it in the comments down below. Okay guys, if you are new to my channel and you want to see more great content from me, hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget to hit that notification bell uh, to be updated every time a new video comes out. Okay guys, like I said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.